all right if you are here that means uh, you are ready to learn microsoft excel and uh, i welcome you to top site infotech my name is ajayi temitapwe and i will be taking you through this course all right uh, let's get started yeah this is the training outline is in the two parts the first part is basically referring to the theory part where we we'll discuss some basic things that you need to know about microsoft excel why the right part there is talking about the practical class with that one we'll be able to go into practical and then look at all those things practically so let's go into the introduction three parts introduction of a spreadsheet a spreadsheet can be viewed from many angles a spreadsheet to a small extent is any sheet which things can be written drawn and plot on a very good example is our notebook business record book receipts and so on so what is spreadsheet itself spreadsheet as a standard can be defined as reports that are used for business and financial application that analyze data in a table format any data that needs analysis using formula and then can be arranged in a table should be in a spreadsheet as long as such data can be arranged in a table and they require data analysis using formula then you should consider using the spreadsheet now what are the types of spreadsheet that we have we have the ordinary or what we refer to as a paper spreadsheet the moment you use a pen and paper and you are writing on the, on the paper then that means you are actually using an ordinary or paper spreadsheet and this is the type of spreadsheet where information are stored using the ink and pens, ink, pencil pen and paper scroll rule and so on they are also layout in form of rows and columns, but fixed. This form of spreadsheet are rigid and limited in space. Changes are not easily made on them. You can imagine writing on the paper and you made mistake. Then definitely to actually erase that, then there are so many things that you need to put into consideration and uh, you know work on like eraser. And in the end, you will not get the best you want from it. Electronic spreadsheet on the other hand is a spreadsheet that can only be accessed on a computer that is being powered by a source it is a spreadsheet that is specially designed for, for representation of data or information in a tabular form rows and columns for the purpose of analysis manipulation calculation forecasting graphical representation of information with electronic spreadsheet you are sure of getting a better result than doing it manually on a paper uh, editing of data or updating of data are better with electronic spreadsheet so let's basically look at the advantage of electronic spreadsheet over ordinary spreadsheet now he's talking about easy modification and flexibility then we also have large workspace then we have better graphic presentation easy calculation and manipulation excellent presentation of reports all these are advantage that this has over a manual spreadsheet what, what are the major uses of spreadsheet we have the teaching profession, administrative profession, scientific or engineering profession, accounting, financial profession, banking profession, and so on. All of these put together, they actually make user. In fact, everyone is a user of spreadsheet program. And uh, we we'll basically limit it to a particular program because there are so many spreadsheet programs. What are the different types of spreadsheet program? We have Microsoft Excel, Corel, Quattro Pro, Lotus 1, 2, 3, and others. But our focus will be on Microsoft Excel. Why? Because it is the most widely used of all commercial spreadsheet programs. If you can use Microsoft Excel, then you can use almost all other spreadsheet programs. They are always almost in the same uh, form, in the same pattern. So let's move on. What is Microsoft Excel? It's basically a software application, which is one of the spreadsheet programs designed in grids of rows and columns of cells for keeping record, data management calculation and analysis basically the grid of rows and columns is basically referring to you know uh, cells being arranged in columns and rows columns and row as you can see from here now this is columns why the line that runs from left to right are rows then each of those boxes you see there they refer to it as cell so those cells are arranged in columns and rows i'm sure this kind of layout is not new to us again especially when it comes to our results report card in school and so on so how do we launch microsoft excel launching excel requires you to just 
press the start button or you press the window key on the keyboard then type excel in the program search box then click microsoft excel icon from the result that displays so i'll basically press my window key then type excel and click microsoft excel so the moment you do that your excel environment will be launched to you just like what you're seeing here now with this excel environment i will click on blank meaning i want to start from a blank worksheet if you have worked on excel before then you can actually click on your previous excel sheet that you have worked with but here i want to start afresh okay i want to believe you can all see the excel page now now i can click on blank workbook to take me to a blank page now coming to my blank page you notice it comes with a single sheet if you look at the bottom part here let me zoom out my screen so that i can see it more clearer at the bottom part here is it comes with a single sheet one now can we all see that bottom part that's sheet one i can add more sheet by clicking on plus here in your own case if you are using excel office 2010 you might actually see it come up with just uh, with three sheets but this is 2016 so that's why i'm having just one sheet here so it's still the same thing don't worry if i want three sheets i can actually click on plus here the plus will add more sheets into my uh, excel book so in it i can actually type in different things whatever you type in sheet one will not be displaying sheet two and what you have in sheet two will not display in sheet three it goes on and on like that so with what i have here i can actually place my cursor in here and type in what i need now we talk about column these are columns a i can say this is column a this is column b this is column c this is column d and these ones are the rows row one rows runs from left to the right from the left to the right that's row but column runs from top to bottom that's column a column b you cannot call a row row a row b no it's very wrong the columns make use of the alphabet why the row make use of the what of the number now the column and the row give birth to something and that is what we refer to as cell they give birth to cell because cell cannot stand on its own unless there is a column and there is a row for every cell there is a row number there is a row alphabet there is a column alphabet and there is a row number attached to it so if i want to make reference to this particular cell now that is this cell i'm clicking in if i want to make reference to that cell i'll look up to the top part of that cell which is cell uh, column c then i'll look to the left which is row four so i'll call that c4 that particular cell is c4 now when you look to the top left corner of your page there you see something they call c4 inside the name boss so that name boss always hold your cell name now i can click on another cell to actually give me another cell name d3 but you don't need to be looking at the name boss before you actually assess your cell name you can always know your cell name by simply looking at the column heading and the row heading so this one is b2 why this one gives me f9 you know now with what i have here like i said i said you can add more sheets by click simply clicking on plus down here this one will keep adding sheet and i can rename each of this sheet to the different department of my company if i own a very big company and the, the company with different departments i want to keep their records separately i could come here and call this one um let's say account department while i call this one uh medical department this one i could give it another name engineering department and so on and how do you rename a particular sheet i can come to this sheet too now if i want to rename it you just right click on it after you right click it will give you options from the list of options you have there you can actually click on rename so when you click on rename the rename it will highlight the sheet too then that means you are ready to type you can then type i can say account department the moment I, I type account department that sheet will be renamed to account and you can keep renaming as time goes on so i will go back to my sheet one now because that's where i want to do uh, the work now here like i said you click inside your cell to actually type in your value now 
what type of value can you type inside the cell and how do you type in a cell? But before we go there, I want us to go back to our slide and uh, we'll move on from there. Column, row, and cell reference. I think I've explained that already. So I'll move to the next slide. Talking about data entry in Excel. Now to enter data in Excel, you select or click in the cell and type the data and then press enter. That's if you press enter, it's going to move downward. But when you press your tab key, it's going to move to the right. Let me show you that. When you are in your Excel environment, if you type in any data and you press your enter key, for example, if I click inside this cell B2, for example, I can type, hello. Now, if I press my enter key, that means it will go down to the next line. Under that's to the next step. But if I press tab key, tab key move forward. While enter key goes downward. If you know the difference, both of them would apply what you have typed. But the direction differs. Tab key move forward while enter key goes downward. If you take note of that. Now I want us to take note of something. I think I hello. Hello remains at the left. A to the left, B to the left. But numbers, you notice they move to the right. But now what if I now type A? A and 2. What would that be? A2 and 2A. They are both alphanumeric. So when you have combination of alphabet and number, they are expected to remain at the left side. Alphabet ordinarily and combination of alphabet, alphabet and number should remain at the left. But when you type number or when you type time, time like 8 a.m., this is time. If I press enter key, I expect it to go to the right side. Can you see? If I type, let's say, date two for example let's say 12th of may if i press enter i expect it to go to the right side as long as it's the correct date that i'm typing so but when you type the wrong date wrong date like 20, uh, 30th of february this is wrong date because february does not get to 30. so february end at 29 when it is leap year and 28 when it is not leap year so computer system understand that so if i should enter 28 now for example is the correct date so you should go to the right side. Am I communicating? Okay, so we'll move on. So with what I have here now, this tells us when we type in the wrong type of dates, we'll see it remain at the left side. So something to tell you what you have typed is wrong. It, it will only go to the left side if you have set the alignment to left. But when you are on your default cell and you type in number, you expect it to go to the right side. That is five and O. Oh. And O is an alphabet, so this will be seen as alphanumeric. It's not the right way to type 50. The zero is alphabet and no number. If I type five and number zero, it should go to the right side. But because I type five and O, that's why it's remaining at the left side. All these common errors, it's possible. You want to type 51, you now type five and high. It's possible it won't go to the right side, to remain at the left side. So all these small, small issues, we have to take note of them. So that is very, very essential. So I'll simply highlight and remove them. But before I go, I want to explain something, which is in the slide also. But let me just explain it here. I can type one and two. Let's assume I want to create a serial number. When I have one and two, this one and two, now I can actually, in, I can continue three, four, five. I can continue typing. But what if I want the, the number to 50? So will I continue typing one, two, three, four, five until I get to 50? That would be too long. So I can just type one and two then I like to create a format. Then this format I've just created, I can use the fill and do to copy the format downward. Remember, I have to highlight first so that the system will recognize the format between the two. Then move your mouse to the fill and do. The fill and do must show in black color. Then drag it down to give you other numbers. You can keep dragging it and the number will keep increasing. Why is it increasing by one one? That's because the difference between the two numbers that I highlighted is just one. So let's assume I have five, I have 10. Now this five and 10, I can highlight it and drag from the edge to give me the difference of five, five, five. You can type January, enter. If you type January, January is a format on its own. The system recognizes that January is a month. If you drag January downward, the system will give you February, March, April, May. See that? If I type January, if you type Monday, the system recognizes Monday to be a day. When you drag it downward, it will give you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But if you type one, 
the instant recognize one as one. If you drag one downward, one will give you one, 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 one. But if you want serial number, you have to maintain type one and two. I like the two together so that the system recognizes that there is a difference between them. Mm -hmm. Please note the difference. So the difference will now be copied along. So you can keep dragging down until it gives you what you want. So let's move on from there. I'll delete that. So I'll basically switch to my to my slide now. Now we are in the slide section. So I've just now when you enter data in Excel, you don't just go back into the Excel and edit it. Now see what this is explaining now. It says to enter data in Excel, you select you select or click in the cell, type the data and press enter to move down the cell or press the tab key to move to the right. To change the test in a cell, you can just click inside the cell and start typing. Anything you had there previously would be erased. But if you want to edit the test, you have made a spelling mistake, for example, then you need to do something else. You are not just going to click and type. If you want to edit the content of a cell, try and type something, click in the cell and type again. You notice that what you have there will disappear. But in case you now want to edit the content of a cell, you would have to do something different. Let's say, for example, I have, I want to type top sites. And I'm mistakenly type top sites without the S. I know that S is a mistake. What I need there is an is E. So all I have to do is to go back and click on the cell. But when I click back on the cell, I will need the S to be changed to E. If I just click and type E, the top side will be removed and the E will replace it. I won't do that, Control Z. But why, how do I now edit this without re replacing what I have there? I have to double click inside the cell. That is one option. When you double click, it will activate the cell or you click in, in the cell and press F, F2. When you click inside the cell and press F2, that's another option to activate the cell. The last option, which is the third one, is to simply come into the formula box come into the formula bar and do the changes there. Just click in front of that, remove the S and type E. Those are three steps. What are the three steps that I mentioned? You double click, you press the F2, or you edit it from the formula box. I want now back to our sheet. Now that is just what is explained there. I'll move to the next one. Column and roll adjustment. Now when you type in a particular column, you, you can notice that just like you are seeing from here, what we should have here is business name. But the business, the name is going under the contact. That is the content of the C1, contact. The business name is the content of B1. But because the space available for business name is not enough, that's why it's going under the contact. You can find yourself in this situation. Or like the serial number, the space there is too wide. I want to increase the serial number. I want to reduce the serial number. That, in that case, you need to adjust your column by reducing the size of the column. And how do you reduce the size of the column? Look at what we have there. You need to have your pointer. Bring your pointer in between B and C, the heading. Not in between the, uh, you are not going within the uh, worksheet. You need to come to the heading part. In the heading part, you can drag to the left or drag to the right, depending on what you want. But in the case of this business name now, I actually need the business name to be, to be increased, so I'll drag to the right. So you just click it and drag it to the right to increase the column, the column space. Hope I'm communicating. You drag it to the right to increase the column space. Let me practicalize that for you so that you see what I'm talking about. Now, this is it here. Initially, you could have something like this, cutting to the next page. And here, let's assume I have something here. Let's say, top right here. Now the top side is not coming in full. I need to make it come out in full. So I'll need to drag from here. So you can actually expand your column width to be much more bigger or make it smaller as per requirement, as per what you need. So you can make it bigger than what you have here or you make it a little bit smaller than that. So let's fire on. Now, that is column and row adjustment. The same way you adjust your column, you can adjust your row. 
If I want to increase the height of these two, for example, this second row, I'll just move my mouse to between two, then I'll drag it down. So by dragging it down, that will basically adjust what you have there, and it will give me it will give me a very uh, a taller row height. It will give me a taller row height. So let's move on. So we have the practical class. Now this is what we are, we are to do in our practical. That's we'll move this to the practical class and we'll use it to explain every other thing that we want to do. Look at what we have here. I might need you to screenshot it on your phone so that while you are working on it, you'll be able to have access to it and see what you are doing. In my own case, I can actually switch and see what I want to do, but in your own case, I need you to screenshot it so that you'll be able to work with it perfectly well. So I'll give you 10 minutes to type in this one. You see the way I will type it in my own case too. That's the way you should type it. Don't worry about the formatting. All this yellow color, blue color, and so on, I'll show you how to do that. So let me switch to my Excel while I show you how you would actually get this one typed on your screen. So just go back to your Excel environment. If you have not launched your Excel, launch it now because we want to do the practical part. So I'll basically clear what we have here. I will work with my sheet three. Now with what I have here, the first thing we have there is actually top site student. You can follow me as I type. Like I said, we need to get this done in 10 minutes. Student exam. Then after the student exam, we have the serial slash number. After you type student exam, you press enter to go to, to move down to A2. Then type your serial number, you press tab. After you type key, you type your first name. Type in the case that you want. Don't type everything in capital letter. First name. Then after the first name, you have your last name. Then after the last name, we have English, maths. So I need to edit that. English, math, and the general studies. Then after the general studies, we have uh, the total. Then after the total, it says average. Then after the average, there it says status. Now after the status, press your enter key. You come back, then you move your cursor under serial number. All I need to type here is one and two. Remember what we said. All you need to do there is type one and two. I like the one and two and then drag it downward until the serial number gets to 10. And the serial number will get to 10 under row 12. Take note of that. The serial number will get to 10 under row 12. So that is what we have there. Now, I might feel the column is too wide. This column, we have done that already. So you can just come in between A and B. Move your mouse to the column heading and drag it backward a bit so that it gives you a smaller column. Now. The first name I have here, you can use any name. Me, I'll be using the same name I have there, Ajayi Temitokwe. Then after I type the Ajayi Temitokwe, I type the score, which is uh, 80, then I have 88. You can use different score in your own case. But me, I want to type exactly the scores that I have there. Okay, how do we get this formatted? After we are through with the typing. Now, if you notice, this top side student exam is, at, is under A1. But I need it to cover A down to I. What was done there was all refers to as cell margin. Cell margin. So cell margin is actually using combining two or more cells to become one. So what I need to do here is to come to click inside my A1. I will drag it across until I get to I1. You click inside A1, press and hold the left button on that, then drag it until you get to I1. Then what you need to do there is to make use of what we call Match cell. You see the match cell at the top that's directly under the help menu there. You see match cell option. So the match cell is what would actually combine that cell to give you something of this nature. I can click the match cell again to undo that. And I can match it again to go back. So margin cell, when you select a range of cells together, you can actually use that to match it together. And that will give you something of that nature. While I'm still there, I can bold the top size student exam and at the same time i can give it color what color do i want and how do i give it color you can come under under your color button here you see that under the size 
under the font size, you see a particular icon under it. That's the color. So just click the arrow beside the color button and you can choose whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be that blue that we choose there. You can use any other color. I can go for brown now. So when I go for brown, I, can, I may want to change the text color to white. So just beside the background color, you can see a text color there. So just click the arrow beside it. Then you choose the color white you want. I may want to change that to yellow and I'll click on yellow. That will give you yellow color. We can, we can come down to the row two where we want to format that. You select from serial number down to the status. I'm sure we all know how to select. Now I don't need to explain that again. Just click inside this and drag it across to status. Now we need to format them together. I'll bold, I'll move them to the center by simply clicking the center alignment. This one will move them to the center. Now, if you notice the cell name is not big enough, so I can actually expand it a bit more to make it a bit uh, bigger as the cell name of that last name. Then the English, math, and the uh, general, they are too big. I'll reduce them. I don't need them to be too wide. So make it smaller. You can do the same thing in your own case. The total two, I may not need them as big as that. Even the average, I can edit it and make it AVG. But now let's leave that for now. Now look at all this. I'll simply reduce them to what I have there. Now I need this. Do we have any color there? Okay, there is a gray color. I can choose any other color I want. If I want this one to be yellow now, for example, background yellow, I can highlight all of it. Then you just come to your fill color and give it yellow color. See that? I'm choosing yellow here because I use yellow at the top here already. Whatever color you are using, don't make your worksheets look color riots. You need to make, make it look beautiful. So don't just choose color anyhow. You have to be dynamic in the way you choose your color and it has to be much more presentable. You get? So please try and be mindful of the color and the way you use those color. Now, this area where the calculation will be, since I've already used yellow, I want to change the color to something else. I can just highlight and give the background a background color of, just come here, I can make it gray color. Or let me just give it a, a light color of this nature. Because of that brown, I can go for this color, this light color. Okay. Now, if you notice, my line is not showing again. Even though I know my test, I can activate the border. This border you are seeing here, they are imaginary. Imaginary in the sense that when you try to print, the line will disappear. Let me show you. If I go to file now and I click on print, for example, you will notice that the line will not show in my printouts. Look at what I have here. Can you see there is no line there? The lines are not showing. Those lines are imaginary lines. So to allow my printout to come out with lines, I may need to activate the lines by simply drawing my boss across all my contents. You see, select your contents by coming up here, you drag it across. After you have selected them, come beside the color to the left side of that color. You see a border icon there. Click the arrow beside it. Then it will give you a list of different borders. So under this border, you select all border. All border means I want all myself to come up with border. Can you see the line is showing here now? And even across the heading too, there will be lines. So the lines will be activated. You only activate that if you want the lines. If you don't want the line, you can go back and deactivate it. All I'll do is to go back here and I'll say no border. If I don't want any border, I'll just say no border. The border will disappear. But the imaginary line will show you again. But I want the border. I'll just go there and select all border. So the border comes back. So I think that gives us what we have there. Okay, it's remaining something down here, total. We need to add the total at the bottom. Then the total was given different color. So I can give it maybe color of red. So I'll just highlight everything under that total section. I'll come to background color and I'll give it red. Then whatever test will be coming out there, I want them to be white color. I can come there and say white. So that means the test color should be in white. Now we can start the calculation now. Now, calculation in Excel is very simple. You don't need to give yourself any headache. Just understand the principle. That is what really matters. Now, what is the principle? I will show you now, right now. 
the principle here is basically to understand the fact that when you are entering normal data, you just click inside the cell and start typing. But when you want to type formula, it has to begin or start with an equals to sign. An equals to sign simply means you are what you're about to type inside this cell is a what is a formula. Now, if I want to add two to five, I can just come here and type equals to two plus five, and I'll press my enter key. Two plus five, and I'll press enter. That gives me what? Seven. Now, it is seven that is displaying here, but that's not the actual content of that cell. When you click on that seven, it will show you the actual content inside the formula bar. That's what you are seeing there. That's the actual content of this cell in the formula bar. That's equal to two plus seven. And if you want to see it, you can double click it or you press F2, like I said earlier. F2 or you double click will activate the cell again for you to do any changes or any addition. Now to align top side, to how to align the top side, that's techno. If you want to align the top side, you have to select the whole headline first and match the cell. Match the cell, techno, are you with me? You have to highlight the whole of that A1 to A I1. Eh? After highlighting, you now click on match cell, match and centralize. That will move the top side student exam to the center. That is just it. If you still can't get that, just leave it. You will come, you will come back to that later, probably after the class. Now, if I want to calculate the total of this, of this score, I know what I need is to add the English, math, and general score together. Now, I won't reference 80, 88, and 87 directly. Let me show you why. I can just come here and say equals to 80 plus 88 plus 87. Now, this will give me the answer that I want, which is 255. Now, let me tell you why we shouldn't type the formula like this. If I now come here, if I change this one to, let's say, 90, this 80 to 90, I expect that this one should change to 265, but it will not change. Because what I use here is a static formula, not dynamic formula. This formula should not be written like this. Now, how do I now write the formula? Now, instead of writing the, typing the 90 here, you take note of the name of that 90. What's the name of the cell of that 90? That is D3. D3. So that's what I will type here. D3. The moment I type D3, notice something. You see that the D3 will be selected automatically. There will be a box around that D3. So instead of 88 here too, what I will type there is what? E3. It's not case sensitive. Either I type in capital letter or small letter, the system will recognize it. And this one too is what? F3. I'm sure you understand how I'm combining these things together. It's not a rocket science. This is D3. This is E3. And this is what? F3. So press your enter key. That will apply the changes. Can you see 265? If I make the change back to 80 now, automatically that formula will automatically change itself to the value. Because what the formula here is saying is whatever is inside D3 should be added to whatever is inside E3 and should be added to whatever is inside what? F3. And that is what will give me the final output there. Now, this same formula, I want to get the total for this Femi or Tedola, Stella, Kimboye, and so on. Now, to get the result for this, all I have to do is, I don't need to come here and start, and start typing the formula one by one. I, all I need to do is to copy the format, like we did earlier in the case of January, Sunday, Monday, and so on. So, what I'll just need to do is move my pointer to the edge. So, you click this edge of the boss. We we'll call it the fill and do. Fill and do. F-I-L-L and do. So, I'll just click on that and drag it downward until I get to the last number. The moment I get there, drop it. It will give you the total for every other person, every other student that you have there, automatically. If the students are up to one million, now let me tell you another trick. Instead of dragging it down one by one, this is another trick. I can just click on this 255. Then when I move my mouse to the fill and do, when I move my mouse to the fill and do, I won't drag it now, I'll just double click. When you double click, it's automatically copied downwards. See that? That's a magic again. But this one copied down up to this total, hmm? which is not what I want. 
Hmm? But it's a magic anyway. I can change my color back to red again. So you can just click on the fill and double click. It automatically copy the formula down as long as there is a value here. Now for the average, we all know what an average is. When you have four value, the average of that four value is the total, the total of that four value divided by the occurrence of that uh, value, which is four. That is the total divided by four. That is what makes up an average. So if I want to calculate the average of this one now, I can just say this total divided by what? Divided by how many subjects we have there? Three. I'll just come here and say G3 divided by what? Three. And it will give me the average. Let me just do that here. I want to show you something. I can calculate the average. I want to do it under the status. I'll delete it. I'll just say equals to total. What is total? Total is G3 divided by I'll put that's divide that is a division sign in Excel. Four slash is a division sign. So divided by three. I'll type three there and strike enter. That is the average score. Hmm? The same vein, I can get the average score. Instead of using this one and calculating the number of subjects I have manually myself, this is not the right way to do it. We'll make use of what we refer to as function. But before we get to that function, here yeah, we use plus. If you want to multiply values together, you use multiplication icon. And that multiplication icon is asterisk. The asterisk you usually see on eight. On eight. The asterisk is on eight. If you want to multiply two values together, you make use of asterisk. Let me do that somewhere at the left side of my screen there. Now, I want to multiply two and three. I'll just say equals to two multiplied by three. You can find yourself doing something when you want to type formula. You can type a formula, let's say four multiplied by five. And after you strike enter, you notice your formula is not applying. It's just staying like this. Some of the formula I just type, this four times five, possible you find yourself in such a situation and you'll be frustrated that what is wrong? It is because I didn't start with what equals to. The moment I press enter now, the formula will apply. So those things, those little, little things, you have to take note of them else. You can be frustrated when you're working with Excel. Equals to sign, without equals to sign, if you just stay there as if you have just entire value, it's not going to move down to the next. It's not going to apply the formula you have typed. So let's move on. So that's multiplication. If I want to divide, let's assume I want to add the five divided by two. I'll just say equals to five forward slash two. I press enter. That will give me 2.5. That's the division sign, forward slash. Uh, I have uh, raised to power two. I can say equals to two raised to the power of the raised to power make use of carrot sign. I don't know if it still work, but I want to try it first and see if it will work. It work in the earlier version of, okay, it's work. Can you see the carrot sign? This is raised to the power of three. This is two raised to the power of three. The moment you press your enter key, it means two times two times two, two in three places. If I say two raised to the power of five, that is two raised to the power two in five places, that's 32. In the same way, you can type that as two times two times two times two times two, and it will still give you the same thing. So all those signs, normal multiplication, addition, division, subtraction, they are all there. And one thing about Excel is it uses almighty formula to calculate, to make its calculation too. For example, if I have something like equals to two, three plus, plus two multiplied by this means two times two is four, then four plus five, that should give me nine. But if it were not to be with almighty formula, this would say five plus two first, which is seven, seven times two, 14, which would be very wrong. If I strike enter now, I should see nine because the system makes use of board mass in doing its own calculation too, that's Excel. The normal standard mathematical operation, that's what it uses, which is board mass. So you have to take note of that when you are combining all your uh, calculation uh, characters together. Now let's go back to our calculation. Now for the average, like I said, I calculated this by using equals to G3 divided by three. But now I want to get the average using the function. We call some things function. There are so many functions in Excel. We have the sum function. We have the products. I'm sure you, you should be able to tell me what these ones are meant for. Sum means addition. When you, when you want to add numbers together, you make use of sum. 
if you want to add, uh, multiply number together, you make use of product. We have average, average to find the average of a range of number. We have minimum for getting the minimum value. We have maximum for getting the maximum value. We have facts to calculate the factorial of a number. We have, um, what else? There are so many. Uh, factorial, we have SQ, our, I think SQ out T, that's for square root. You want to get the square root of a number. Why is SQ out? If for square, you want to get the square of a number. You know, it goes on and on like that. There are so many of them, but these are basically the basic ones. You might not necessarily need to use all of them. There are so many, even the one that has to do with uh, uh, engineering, calculation, and so on. Now, let's move on. To get the average of this one, now, according to what we have there, we'll just say equals to average. Then after I get typing the average, I'll open my brackets. I'll just select the cell, the three cell that I want. After I type average, I repeat. I say equals to average, open brackets. Then after you open the brackets, what I should have typed there is D3 ratio F3, but I can just highlight it like this. Then I'll close the bracket. The moment I press my enter key, it will give me the same 85 as average. You can see the 85 we got with this one. The same 85 we get we got with this one. Can you see? So both of them, they are the same thing. They will give you the same result. But the reason why I prefer this one to the other one is because this one automatically does the calculation of the number of uh, no, uh, of data you are bringing together. Unlike this one that you have to go and count it yourself and put divided by three. This is a key way of calculating it. Why this is the right way. Now I will simply copy this one downward. Copy this down to get the other average. Automatically it gives you the average of all those numbers. Now take notes, average, because there is a division involved. Some of them are coming out in four decimal place. In your own case, you can have three there, four decimal, five decimal place, and so on. It will not be nice for you to have your output like this. You have to maintain the same number of decimal place in all cases. So for this average now, I might want to reduce it to just two decimal place. How do you reduce or increase a decimal place? Let's highlight, don't click on the H. I like the numbers you want. Then you can then reduce. Now take note of something. When you notice your cell coming out in this number, it's simply telling you the content of that cell is, is longer compared to what the cell can contain. If I expand this one now, my test will come out fine. But if I reduce it, it will show in this hash symbol. Especially when it is calculation, it is only calculation that display like this. But when you have your normal number, it will not display like that. Instead, it will go under. But when you have calculation, calculation will not go under. It would give you hash symbol like you are seeing. Now, I want this one to be two decimal place. I will just reduce it until I get to two decimal. You can make use of it this two to increase and to reduce. So that is the average. We have calculated the average. Now, I want to calculate the total of scores under English. You know, if you are calculating the total of this one, that means we need to add them together. We, could have, we can just come here and say D3 plus D4 plus D5 plus D6, D7, D8, D9, D10, 11, 12. And I'll just place my cursor and type them here. D3 plus D4. This one is simple, Abby. But I tell you, if you have 100 students, it will, not, it will not be as simple as having these 10 students you have here now. Now, the simplest way to do that is simply to make use of a function. That will make it much more easier. Just type equals to sum. After typing equals to sum, just select the cell. Or if you know the first, if you know the first cell and the last cell, it's very simple. You just type D3 ratio D12. That will give you the sum of the value under English. If I press my enter key, it gives you the total. Now, let me explain something here. This ratio means if you are to call it in English language, that's all this formula I've just typed here. I'll just say sum D3 to D12. That's what this basically means. Sum D3 to D12. That's what the formula actually means. Now, let me type another one for you. 
that says equals to some Let me sum this D3, comma D12. I will tell you what this one means. Now look at this two. If I press enter key, this one gives me one, two, one. What's the difference between a ratio and a comma? Comma here simply means sum D3 and D12. It's different from two. D3 and D12 is different from D3 to D12. So this comma basically means and. Why in the case of this ratio, it means two. So you need to take note of those two characters. They are very, very essential because when you are using them. Now let me create a scenario. I want to add from this first student to the, five, for the, to the fifth student and add that to this last student. I want to skip students C, seven, eight, and nine. So if I'm, if I'm to do that, I'll just come here and say equals to some open brackets. I will just say D3 ratio D7. That is first to five student. And I'll say comma D12. As simple as that. If you notice after typing, you notice this three to D7 is already selecting, is selecting the student already. Then he now jumps to the last one, which is with that D12. What this simply means is sum D3 to D7 and add it to D12. This one means two, while this one means and. So I can change the narrative. I'll just say D9 ratio. Now, it means skip D8. Sum D3 to D7, leave D8 out, then sum D9 to what? To D12. So with this character combination, you can actually do a lot of if I, assuming this is D10 now, that means I'm skipping D8 and D9. So you press your enter key, the addition of those values would be removed. D8 and D9 will be removed, which is the sixth guy and the seventh guy. So it's now giving me 407. That is just what we have there. So let's move on, let's move on. Now with this I have here and I want to copy it. I don't need to type the same thing here. Although I can come here and say equals to sum again. Then I can select all I want. Sorry. Then close the brackets and press enter. I can come to the next one. I can keep doing it. But the easiest way and the best option is to simply copy the formula by dragging this one like this. This way. I can copy it under other ones too to get their total. So the total for all the total score, the total average score is this as well. So I think. That is for all the calculation. If you want to calculate the status now, the status, and from what we I sent to the Telegram uh, group, the status there is to show either pass or fail. What will make a student to pass? If the student score less than 50, if the student score greater than or equals to 50, the student should what should pass. Those are the criteria we want to use. But which of these cell do we want to use for our calculation? We want to make use of the average score because we want we don't want to use cell that is above hundred. Now, in order for us to calculate the total, that's the status. To know if a student pass or fail, all I need to do is to place my cursor. There is a syntax that is in use. I'll just type the syntax there. The syntax says, I won't put equals to sign so that it won't uh, equals to condition, condition, comma, value. Okay, comma, let me just say true, comma, false. Or I can say if condition comma okay comma okay let me just say yes value comma and no value or I could say another version 
I'm just trying to give you the difference, this thing you can understand. Condition, comma, go, comma, come. Okay, let me just say this to be positive. Then this is negative. I want to believe this, this should be explanatory enough. What I've just placed there. Now this one says if condition, after the condition you put the value that should that should uh, be displayed if that condition is true. Else, display another value if the condition is false. If the condition is true, display the yes value. Else, display the no value. If the condition is true, display the positive value. Else, display the negative value. Now, display the negative value if you are using a test. Test like pass or fail. You have to put them in quotes like this. If you are using, if you are passing in a value, a static value to be precise, you have to put it in quotes. But if you want to make reference to a cell like B2, you have to, you, you don't have to put it in quotes or you want to do calculation, calculation like B2 plus three. You don't put it in quotes. You have to type it directly like that, inside that. But you have to take note of where the comma is. Those comma are very important. Now, in the case of what we want to do now, to get this one, what do we do? How do we get this done? Let me bring this down so that my typing will not cover it. Now, if I want to get this, I want to make use of the average score. You place your cursor inside under the status, then you type equals to if, open bracket. You know, starting with equals to means I'm typing a formula. Then what is my condition? Condition is if H2 is greater than or equals to 50. That's his condition. If the value inside H2, oh, sorry, H3 is what I should use. Not H2, sorry, that's a mistake. H3 is greater than or equals to 50. Then comma, then what should be the value to pass? Remember I said, if you are typing in tests, a static test that will not change, you have to use quotes. That's why I'm quoting it now, pass. I'll close the quotes. Then if, what if that condition is not met? If the H3, the value of H3 is not up to 50, what should not happen? I'll now put comma, open a quote, I'll say fail. Close the quote and close the brackets. That is your formula. If H3 is up to 50, display pass. Else, display fail. Press your enter key. That will give you the results. See, I'm quoting this pass because this pass is a, is a constant. Constant in the sense that it's not changing. It's not like all these H2, uh, G2 that has value inside them and the value can change anytime. But in the case of pass, I want this pass to always be pass. Nothing changes. Nobody can change it from anywhere. Hmm? And I want this fail to always be fail. Nobody can change it from anywhere. So that's why I have to quote it. If I, if I didn't quote it, the computer will tell me what I have there is error because the system does not understand what the pass means or what the fail means. Let me press enter. Can you see? Ash name. If you did not quote it, this is what you will get. Ash name. Because the system does not understand what pass means. Because the system is expecting a variable, a formula to come in. So that's why I have to quote it to avoid that error. So press your enter key. All right. I will just copy this down. I will just drag the formula to get others. Then those that pass, you see pass. Those that fail will come in fail. Now, one thing about this is any of these value, you can increase the value, like all these ones here fail. I can increase the value here now to get a higher value for my average. For example, I can see this one is, let's say, score 65 in the exam. So now the, the score is 43. It's still yet not up to 50. So I can increase this one, let's say, to 72. So this is on 60 now. So that score is on pass. So that means this person pass now. If I want to make this person to pass, I can increase this value. Maybe this one to 82. So you can see now, this person to pass now 52. The next thing we want to do, so let me just clear all this I have here. Now I want to do something again. Let's assume we want to do something like padding. Let me just say new, new average. New average in the sense that I will explain that. 
in the school, they want their students to pass, but they notice there are so many failure, and they need to patch them. Patch them in the sense that they want to help them to add score, add score to their results, and they want to add score to this year. And the only set of people they will ask score to is any of them that score below 50. And what score do they want to add? They want to add three, three points to their score so that it will pull them up a bit at least. For those that score up to 47, they can pass too. And those that score below 47 will still fail. But yet, they want to increase the score of all their students. So there is a condition there that it is only when you score below 50 that three should be added to your score. Else, nothing should be added to that score. So how do we type in the formula? It's as simple as typing equals to if, equals to if H3 is less than 50. This one will automatically select if that cell is less than 50, comma. So what should now happen? H3 should now add three. You notice I'm not quoting this one. This is a formula. I want to add three to that H3, so I shouldn't quote that. Else, just display the value of H3. Don't add anything to it. That's the formula. This is the value two. Why this is the value false? This is the condition. This is the true value. Why this is the false value? True value simply means if the condition is met, if truly the value of H3 is less than 50, then 3 will be added to that H3. Else, just display H3. If I press enter key now, nothing will be added to that H uh, average because it's greater than 50. If I copy it downward, let's watch. Now look at 70.3, it's still 70.3. Look at 44. 44 changed to what? 47. 51 remains 51. But if you look at this 47 now, changed to 50, that means this person will now pass. He's not failing again. This person will pass now because it has moved from 47 to what? 53. So that means if I should make a calculation of this on, on this average, that means this person will pass now instead of failing. Okay, now I move on, but understanding it is what really matter. You need to understand that flow. That's what matters. So I'll take away that average section. I don't want to use the average, the new average section. I'll take it away. Remove my color. I don't want any color here. Now, after getting after this calculation, we want to get something again. So I'll come under somewhere around here. I'll type score start there. Score starts. Now, with the score start I have, I want to give it, I want to match the cell, then give it a background color of uh, blue. It could be that same yellow too, if I so wish. Now, under it, I have three things I'm looking at. Now, the first one is the best score. Then the next one is the average score. And the last one is the lowest score. Now, these three score, I want to get them down here. So I'll simply make use of, I've actually show, I've shown you the function that will be used. For the best score, what I need is the maximum. Which score is the maximum of all these average score? I'll just place my course here and type equals to MAX, max. The maximum score of what to what, of everything under average. I want to get the maximum score. Don't highlight the total with it, or don't highlight this one with it. You start from H3 to H12, that is, equals to mass H3 to H3, if I press enter key, it will give you the highest of those score. And from all this score, the highest of them is 85. The rest of them, if any of them should get more score, higher than 85, automatically it will come in under the best score. Let me increase the value of some of this one so that they can come out higher. For example, let's say this is 90, this is 80, and this is uh, 92. See that you can see it automatically take over 87.33. It will take over from the 
85 and the 7.33 will take charge of that base score. Then for the average score, it's basically to type the average of all these score. I'll close the bracket and press my enter key. That's the average of all these scores. It will add all of them together and divide it by 10. And that is this, can you see? 585 divided by 10 is 58.5. Now the lowest score is equals to MIN. Open brackets, all of this. It will bring out the lowest score of all the score. That's 32.67, that is it. That's what you are saying there. So that is all the scores I want to get there. I want to give it a border. So I'll just go to the border section and apply the border to it. So the border applied. So that is what we have there. How do we get a chart on screen? How do we get a chart on board? We want to have the chart on the screen now. The first chart we have there is the, is the pie chart of this guy. How do we get the pie chart of this guy down here? It's as simple as selecting it, selecting the best score. I like the best score to the lowest score, like this. Hold down your control key and I light the numbers in front of it. I light the best score down to the lowest score. Hold down control key. Now I light the numbers in front of them. After doing this, you come to your inserts. Under inserts, you come to charts. This, are, this is chart area. But of all these charts, what I need is a pie chart. This is pie chart. Now click on the icon beside the pie chart. Then you now choose the type of buy chart, pie chart. Or is it the donut chart you want? Is it the flat one you want? Or you want the 3D type of charts? I want the 3D version. So I'll just select 3D. The chart will insert so big like that. But you can reduce it, make it smaller by simply clicking it on the edge. Make it smaller and place it where you want it. That's why I want the pie chart. I'll just expand it out that way. If you have got this chart, I need this chart to be bigger. You can click around it. Just click a white click, click around it. This boss will come out. When you click around it that way, then you can drag it from the edge here to make it a bit bigger. Make sure your dragging is not going beyond that box anyway. No matter what drag the dragging you want to use, make sure it's not going beyond the box. The chart boss itself. So I think that is basically okay. I can now if you notice this guy down here, that's what we first to as legend. Legend in the sense that legend in the sense that it uh, it gives you the color of it gives you what the meaning of uh, it gives you the meaning of each of this color on the chart on the pie chart. Now this first color here is average according to the legend. This gray color is the lowest color. Why the best color is the blue color? That's according to the legend. The legend too, you can reposition it. If you want the legend to be at the left side, I can come to maintain your design, come under design menu, then come to add elements. You can come to legend and say you want the legend to be at the right side. So when you put the legend at the right side, it makes your shot bigger. So let's maintain the right side legend. Then the title, I can change the title to student student uh, score stats. Now, for this one here now, I need the score to come out. I need to display the data label. So display data label simply require me to click on, just click within your charts, come to your elements, come to data label, and now choose how you want the data label to be. You can move across it to see the different data label option. I repeat, come under your design, add chart elements, if you are using a lower version, if you are using a lower version, uh, you, see, you should see something, you should see something like a chart element there. Then come to your legend and choose, come to data label and choose the option that you actually want. I will use the outside data label. I can put it inside too. You can see the way the inside is and the center. If I want it to be inside, I can actually make use of inside. But if I want outside, I'll choose that. But let me choose inside here. Then if you want to format it, maybe you want to change the color, just click on one of them. All of them will be selected together. Then go to your home. Under home, change the font color. I may say I want white. 
I can hold it. If you feel like changing the color of any of this bar, instead of this one coming out as gray, if I want it in yellow, I can click. At first, when you click at first, it will select all the, all the shape together. But if I click the second time, it will select only this one. Now look at it again. If I click at first, everything will be selected together. But if I now click again, only this one will be selected. So I want this one now. When I click it, I can change the color. You can right click it or you can right click it and put, choose the color you want here. So this is selecting now. Make sure you are selecting only this one. Click at first, click again to select only this, then choose the color you want. So and you see I want that to be yellow. And this one, I want this one to be red. I'll click on this one now. Change the color on that home and apply red. So as you are changing their color, automatically it will affect the legend too. Any question on that? But this yellow is not making it, this test to come out well. So I can change that color from yellow to this so that the white color can come out better. Let's move on. Okay, now we want to insert the bar chart. In this case, it's not the start we are using. We want to make use of the name. But before we insert the, okay, let's insert it. I will just select the first name. But before we actually insert that, I want us to do something. If you notice we have first name, we have last name here. But after the first name and last name, we want to have the full name in between here. So how do we add? Now, I said I need a particular column here that will contain my full name. That means this English will move to E. Whatever you have on that math, move to F. Take note of our calculation. The calculation for our total is D3, E3, F3. After I insert a column, the calculation will change to E3, F3, G3. Automatically, all these things will adjust themselves. That is Excel for you. Now, if I need a column here, now I'll just click here and I'll just right click on that G. Now click insert. That insert means I'm inserting a column because I'm right clicking on column. Now click here now and type full name. Then under the full name, you can we can then get our full name inside. I'll just click in here. How do I combine these two together inside this cell? To get the full name. Normally, I can just come here and type Ajayite Mitokwe like this and use shortcuts. Ajayite Mitokwe, bam, like that. I'll come here to and type Femi or Dead Dollar inside here. I'll come here and type Stella Akimbo for you. But what if Ajayite Mitokwe now changes to Ajayi? Are you on it? Does it mean I will have to come here and change this one too? Ajayi, are you on it? It will make no sense. So the, the best option to use is to combine the value of these two together. It's either I use a function or I use uh, the ampersand. Ampersand is this, the and sign on seven. That symbol you have on seven, that's an ampersand. I can use this ampersand to combine them together. So I'll just come here and say equals to D3 and C3. So this one will combine what you have inside B and C together. If I press my enter key, it gives me the full name. What do you notice? Is that correct? I can copy it downward for others. How do we generate space after we have combined together? You can go back to the first one. I can delete these ones because that's not what I actually want. But for this one, to generate space, all you have to do is to concatenate space with it. Now look at it. I will just generate a blank space by using this quotation. Put a, a quote, a space, quotes and you had an answer sign. Look at what I did. What I just did was to this, there's a space here in between these two quotes. I added a space. So that is what will give me space between Ajayi and Ayori. Then this one is to combine B3 to a space. Then that space to what? To C3. Combine B3 to a space. Between the two quotes, there should be a space. Then combine the space to what? To C3. If I press my enter key now, I will have a space. So I'll copy it downward. So that gives me the space that I need. Did you get that? It's the same method to combine three cells together. Four cells, assuming I have three names. For example, assuming I have three names, Ajayi, 
to me talk where are you already? I want to combine these three names together. I just to me talk where are you? I want to combine them together inside this cell. I can just say equals to Ajayi and I'll put a space and a metaphor combine that one again to the space then and higher. Basically, if I press my enter key, the three of them combine together just like that and you have space in between them. It's as simple as that. So you can use it to combine four cells together, five cells. Or let's assume I have something like Arsenal. Arsenal. And I have Chelsea. I want them, I want to do their fixture. Arsenal versus Chelsea. I'll just say equals to V this should be combined with a space. But in between the space, I will put versus VS. Because that simply means that code is already, you know, taking place, is already allowing me to type something in between. Because that simply means anything can come in between the codes. So I have Chelsea. If I press enter, it will have Arsenal versus Chelsea. This is what I did there. In between the codes, I can put anything. Anything I want. I could put plus here if I like. If I press enter, it will say Arsenal plus Chelsea. So anything can come between that code and it could be ordinary codes. So I can say VS. That's V3 and C3. This one is just an example I'm showing you. So I'll delete that. Now to get the bar shards, it's the same way we have gotten the uh, pie shards, this pie shard here. Now to get the bar shard, just select what you want to use. I'm using the first name against the average. First name against the average. Now to get the first name against the average, I'll just highlight, hold down the control key and select the average. Come to my inserts, then you simply come to your bar chart. So under the bar chart there, you select the bar chart you want. I'm very much in love with 3D. So most time I use my 3D bar. But for what we have there, according to what we have in our, uh, it's not just name against the total, it's against the subjects that we want to do. The first name against all the three subjects together combined. So I will need to select the heading with it. You select first name with the content under, under first name. Hold down the control key now. Select the three subjects with the content under them, like that. The first name with the three subjects together. Then after selecting this way, you can then go to your insert, come to your bar chart. The moment you move your mouse across the bar chart, it will show you exactly what I just, what we have there. So you can see, if I click it now, that comes with the legend. The legend here will explain what each of those colors stands for. So I can move it down. Just go down, position this one down there. Where you want it, you can expand it, make it bigger to cover more area. See what we have there. So I have the legend there. If I want the legend to be at the left side, you know what to do. All I have to do is to come to my chart element, then come to legend, and just say right. Right means you want the legend to go to the right side. That's the legend there. So you can position a legend at the right. You can maintain the bottom. You can take it to the top. Charlie did it at the top. I'll just say legend to go to the top. Then when at the top, I want it somewhere around here. I can move it manually to where I want. So I want it here. What the chart title? I want the chart title at the left side, like that. Then I'll type in the chart title. So just select what you have in the chart title and type in. I have student student. I want to see what we use here. Student exam score chart. All right, so I can position it very well. You can give it color if you so wish. You can go back to your home and bold it. You can change the color, the test color if you want to use another color. 
Maybe I want that color to be blue color. Whatever you want. I can make my shirt bigger by clicking around it. Click around the shirt, then you can increase the size upward so that it comes more taller. Then there's something we need to do. We need the bottom part here to come with tie two and the left part here to come with tie two. Those are what we call axis, axis tie two. How do I add an axis tie two? We have to come to design, come to add elements, then you now choose shirt, uh, axis tie two. This is shirt tie two, which is what I've typed already, this one. But what I need is axis tie two. We have the primary, we have the horizontal. So the primary is the one that goes to the bottom, Why the horizontal, the primary horizontal is the one that goes to the bottom, Why the primary vertical is the one that goes to the left. So I'll select primary vertical first for this one. So let me reduce my shirt area so that that we have a space to stay in. I will reduce this one to upward a bit so that I have a space for that. So just change the value of this. I'll call this one student score. So if I want to get for the name, student name down here, I'll just go back to the add element, assist type to, I'll select primary horizontal to add that. Then I'll now type in the value student name. So that gives me what something of that nature. You can change the color. If I don't like the color in this bar, maybe this one now, this one, I want to change all the colors there to Red. So I'll just click it. It will select all that bar, only that bar alone. Now I click on it. You see a color come up here. Or after you select it that way, just come to your home, under home, or you come to formats. Under format, you see shape fill. Or under home. Sorry. Under home, you see fill. So just select the fill color there and choose the color you want. This one, I may want it to be yellow. This gray color. So I'll just click it. Change the color to yellow. You can change the color of your bar to whatever color you so wish. And if you use something of that issue, and your legend automatically will change too. Now, I want to insert that last chart. I think that is very simple. Any, but what we want to use there is just the name against the average score. That's what we are using. Name against average score. So you just go to your insert, bar charts, then you now choose the this first one, then reduce the size and position it there. That's the chart you have there. That one is pretty straightforward. So I bring it here. Then I can increase the size to be on the same height, on the same height with this chart at the left side. So that's what we have there. So I will expand this one to be uh, to be on the same level with this upper shot, so that they can they can look much more presentable. Oh, did I drag something here? Okay. So that is basically what we have there. So you can change the title of this shot now to student average average score. Now let me zoom out what I have there so that you see it on one screen. Now this is what we have. That's everything on one screen you are seeing there. So we'll get to know if we can print it on one day four or not. If it can, if we cannot, all we have to do is to reduce the height of this chart. I can reduce the height of the chart so that my, chart, my paper will be able to contain it. Can you see what I did there? I can reduce the height of that chart. But first, let's leave it first. We'll check if our page can contain this. If we cannot contain it, then we can we can reduce the height. To print is pretty straightforward. I'll just go to my file. If you are using the 2010 version, click on that ribbon. It will give you a drop down. Then you now click on print. When I click on print, look at what my print is showing me. You can see not all my this thing is showing very well because my paper is on portraits. My paper is on portraits. See what I have. Is hiding some of my shots, the two shots, pie shot and the second bar shot. Now, what I need to do is to basically convert my paper from portraits. You can see the portrait here. Convert the portrait to landscape. Just click here and see what I want is landscape. 
then to show me all my shots. You can see all the shots is coming on one page now. You can see that now. So you can convert it to landscape. If in the end it's not showing, like let's assume this one is cutting to the next page, you might need to go back to your shots to your page and reduce. I can I mean need to assuming this one is like this before. Let's assume it's like this. Let me show you how it will look like in the now. If you look at what I have here now, you can see this is not showing fully. The bar, the chart here is not showing fully too. So what you need to do is to basically go back to your page and adjust all your contents. This the moment you click on print preview, you notice a dotted line. That dotted line tells you your printable area of your documents. You can see where the dotted line is here. That means I can still type something here and it will, it will still show on my A4 paper. I can type something here and it will still show on my A4 paper. So this one, I have to make sure they all go inside this dotted area. I have to push this one inside the dotted area. Make sure everything I have there is inside the dotted area. So, so that when I print, everything will be visible. Hmm? So basically that is what we have there. Like I said, I'll go to file and say print. Choose your paper size. I want A4. Then ensure you select the landscape so that everything will come out on one paper. What you are seeing here now is one full A4 paper. That's an A4 paper size. And you can see all my data are coming out there. So the moment I click on print, if I click on print here now, automatically it's going to send to the printer after I've chosen the printer I'm sending to. So if I click on printer, because I select a black and white printer, everything, everything changes to black and white. If you select a color printer, everything changes back to what? To color. Can you see? So when I click on print, now it's going to send to my printer. When you click on the chart and you go to file and you click on preview, it means it is only chart that will show in preview. If you want to preview, you have to click outside. Don't click on any charts. Click outside of your chart. Make sure you're not clicking on the charts. You can click within your table and you go to file and click on print. Then it will come out fine. 